This video is about amino acids and the isoelectric point. In this video, I will go over some background information about what amino acids are, why we care about them, what their isoelectric point is, as well as how to calculate it. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. Each amino acid is a monomeric subunit that can react with other amino acids and create a polymer chain. This chain, if it gets long enough, is what we call a protein. All amino acids have similar structural components. Each amino acid has a carboxylic acid functional group, shown in yellow, and an amine group, shown in green. In addition, amino acids have unique side chain functional groups, shown in red. This R side chain is what differentiates between various amino acids and gives amino acids their unique properties. Recall that amino acids have both acidic and basic regions on them. This makes their behavior in solutions of varying pH rather unique. By changing the pH of the solution, we can actually change the overall charge on an amino acid. This process depends on the pKa of what we call titratable protons. Titratable protons are just hydrogen atoms that will dissociate from the amino acid due to a change in pH during an acid-base titration. Titratable protons can be found on the carboxylic acid and amine functional groups, and sometimes on chains. We can see this effect on the generic amino acid shown here. In an acidic solution, both the amine and carboxylic acid groups are protonated, and the amino acid has an overall positive charge. As we increase the pH, the carboxylic acid group is deprotonated, and the overall charge is now neutral. Lastly, in a basic solution, even the amine group is deprotonated, and the amino acid is left with an overall negative charge. This effect is very important for proper protein function. Amino acid charge plays a large role in determining the three-dimensional or tertiary structure of proteins. As such, change in pH can have a greatly adverse effect on the conformation of proteins by changing the charges on the individual amino acids. Let's take a look at how the pH can change the charge on an amino acid. First, however, we have to define pKa. pKa is just a measure of the strength of an acid in solution. More specifically, it is the pH at which a proton will dissociate from its parent's compound. In our case, the parent compound is the amino acid, and the proton is located on, on the amine and carboxylic acid groups. You can find charts, such as the one shown here, that lists the pKa values for amino acids. This one is taken from a biochemistry textbook. Let's use glycine as an example. In this chart of pKa values, we are given the pKa of the carboxylic acid proton and the amine proton. We will observe what happens to the glycine amino acid as we increase the pH of its solution. At low pHs, we know that all of the protons will be associated with the amino acid. However, as we increase the pH, this will change. When we reach the pH corresponding to the pKa of the carboxylic acid proton, which we know is 2.34 from the table, that proton will dissociate from the amino acid, and it will acquire a neutral charge. If we continue to increase the pH, we will eventually reach the pH corresponding to the pKa of the amine proton, 9.6. At this pH, the amine proton will also dissociate from the amino acid, and our amino acid will now have a negative charge. At this point, we have no remaining titratable protons, and so the amino acid will not lose any more protons as the pH continues to rise. Since the charge of amino acids is important to protein structure, it is worth further investigating. We now know that increasing pH will deprotonate amino acids and make the amino acid more negative. However, we need some way to quantify this effect of pH on charge. This is where the isoelectric point comes in. The isoelectric point is defined as the pH at which the majority of amino acids in a solution will have no net charge. We must say majority here because of ind individual amino acids will have slightly differing charges. However, on average, the majority of amino, of amino acids at the isoelectric point will be neutral. The formula for isoelectric point is shown here. Pi equals pKa1 plus pKa2 divided by 2. Essentially, we're taking an average of the two pKa values 
and we'll go into more detail as to which pKa values are being averaged shortly. There are four steps to calculating the isoelectric point of an amino acid. The first step is to draw the amino acid in its fully protonated form, making sure to include the protons on the amine, carboxylic acid, and, if necessary, side chain groups. At this point, the amino acid will be positively charged. The second step is to label the titratable protons with their pKa values, as found on a pKa chart, such as the one shown earlier in this video. The third step is to remove protons in order of increasing pKa until the amino acid gets a net neutral charge. And finally, the fourth step is to use the pKa that gave a neutral molecule and the next highest pKa to calculate the isoelectric point using the equation shown. So let's do some examples. In this example, we're going to calculate the isoelectric point of the amino acid histidine. Let's go through the steps to do so. The first step is to draw the amino acid in fully protonated form. The second step is to label titratable protons with their pKa values. And these pKa values are just ones that are looked up in a table similar to the one that I showed earlier in this video. The third step is to remove protons in order of increasing pKa until the amino acid is neutral. So if we look at this amino acid right now, it has a net charge of positive 2. So we need to remove 2 protons to make it become neutral. The lowest pKa value is the pKa of the carboxylic acid hydrogen, so that's the one that we're going to remove first. Um, if we look at this molecule, we now have a net charge of positive 1, so we need to remove one more proton. The next highest pKa value is the pKa of the same group, so that's the proton that we're going to remove next. Finally, at this point, we see that we have one positive charge and one negative charge, so our histidine molecule has a net charge of zero. The fourth and final step is to use the pKa that gave a neutral molecule and the next highest pKa in the formula for isoelectric point. Recall that the pKa that gave a neutral molecule was the pKa of the side chain functional and that pKa was 6. The next highest pKa is the pKa of the amine group and that's 9.17. So those are the two values that we plug into our formula. When we evaluate this expression, we find that the isoelectric point of histidine is approximately 7.58. Now what this means is that at the pH of 7.58, the molecules of histidine will have an average charge of zero. This is important, as I said earlier, in order to have proper protein function. Let's look at another example. Let's use lysine for the second example. Step one is draw the amino acid in fully protonated form. Step two is to label the titratable protons with pKa. Step three, remove protons in order of increasing pKa. The amino acid is neutral. We now have a neutral molecule. The final step is to use the pKa that gave the neutral molecule and the next highest pKa in the formula for isoelectric point. The pKa that gave a neutral molecule is 8.9 and the next highest pKa is 10.53. When we average these, we find that the isoelectric point for lysine is 9.74. Now this is quite a bit higher than the isoelectric point for histidine, and it just means that at a more basic pH, lysine has a neutral charge. In the final example, we use the amino acid glutamic acid. Step one is draw the amino acid in fully protonated form. Next, we label the titratable protons with their pKa values. Then we remove protons in order of increasing pKa until the amino acid is neutral. At this point, we realize that we only have a net charge of positive 1, 
so we only need to remove one proton. That proton is the one with the lowest pKa, and we see that corresponds to 2.19. Now we have a net charge of zero. The final step is to use the pKa that gave a neutral molecule and the next highest pKa in the formula for isoelectric point. The pKa that gave a neutral molecule is 2.19, and the next highest pKa is 4.25. When we put those in formula, we find that the isoelectric point for glutamic acid is 3.22. Now that's quite a bit lower than the other two amino acids, and it just means that at the pH of 3.22, glutamic acid will have a neutral charge. Again, this pH is very important to know when glutamic acid will be able to function properly in a protein. That's the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching.